Shut up and sit down. On this edition of Inside the Author Studio, we're going to be exploring anti heroes. What are they? What are they not? And why are they so popular? So what is an anti-hero? In the simplest terms, an anti-hero is the protagonist of a story, but they go about their business in a more aggressive manner than your average cookie-cutter hero. The anti-hero is neither cookie-cutter nor dark side black. Instead, they are colored with shades of gray. I think a lot of people miss the mark when they're talking about anti-heroes. I've seen full-on villains lumped into many lists ranking the best anti-heroes. But let's be clear here and now, an anti-hero is not a villain. An anti-hero is more than just the lead of the story. There are many movies and novels told from the villain's perspective, especially today. But I would argue that you can't call a murderer like Patrick Bateman in American Psycho an anti-hero. He's not killing because of some messed up sense of justice. He just enjoys it. Walter White from Breaking Bad just barely misses the list of anti-hero examples because although he begins his journey building a meth empire to support his family, in the end he winds up enjoying the criminality of it more. I liked it. I was good at it. What sets the anti-hero apart from a villain is that they are still committing acts in the name of righting wrongs. Their methods are often extreme, but that's what makes them so popular. One of the best examples of an anti-hero is the Punisher. After his family is viciously killed by the mob, this former soldier goes on a roaring rampage of punishment, intent on clearing out as many criminals as possible. The difference between the Punisher and more straightforward good guys was explained perfectly in season two of the TV series Daredevil. You run around this city like it's your damn shooting gallery. Yeah, what do you, you do? You can... What do you do? You act like it's a playground. You beat up the bullies with your fists, you throw them in jail, everybody calls you a hero, right? And then a month, a week, a day later, they're back on the streets doing the yeah. same goddamn so, thing. So you just put them in the morgue. You're goddamn right I do. You ever doubt yourself, Frank? Not even for a second. Really? Really, you never think for one second, shit, I just killed a human being. It's being pretty generous. A human being who did a lot of stupid shit, maybe even evil, but had one small piece of goodness in him. Maybe just a scrap, Frank, but something. And then you come along and that one tiny flicker of light gets snuffed out forever. I think you're wrong. Which part? All of it. I think there's no good in the filth that I put down, that's what I think. And how do you know? I just know. Look around, man. This city, it stinks. It's a sewer. It stinks and it smells like shit, and I can't get the stink out of my nose. I think that this world, it needs men that are willing to make the hard call. That's what I think. I think you and me are the same. Frank, same. You know it. Only I do the one thing that you can't. You hit them and they get back up. I hit them and they stay down. I make sure that they don't make it out on the street again. I take pride in that. You see more anti-heroes cropping up in popular fiction, television, and movies because the bland vanilla good guys who do everything by the books just isn't realistic. Of course, characters like Captain America and Superman will always have their place in the zeitgeist of popular culture. But some people just prefer Batman because he has an edge to him. That's the same reason why Stone Cold Steve Austin became so popular during the Attitude Era in the WWF. Austin was a babyface, or good guy, at the time, but he handled his business with aggression and questionable tactics. 
He held an edge that was more appealing than the heroes who came before telling kids to take their vitamins. Instead, Austin drank beer, threw up the middle finger, and used colorful language which led him to being one of the most beloved pro wrestlers of all time. The anti-heroes who are written the best have traits that are more believable to the reader. It's the same reason why villains with highly developed backstories will jump off the page, where one-dimensional villains will fall flat. If a villain doesn't have a good reason for committing the terrible acts he's perpetrating throughout the story, it feels hollow. And if a protagonist is picture-perfect without any flaws, that's hollow too. It's the reason why Brenda was a more interesting character on Beverly Hills 90210 than her brother Brandon. Brenda had an edge to her, while Brandon was just too damn perfect. Anti-heroes have an edge, but that doesn't make them villains. It just means they get the job done with a little more aggression than your average good guy. Just take a look at the terminal list and you'll see what audiences and readers are craving. It's not about the violence, it's about making a statement to the antagonist in a way that cuts through the red tape and gets their attention. Some of the most popular characters of all time have been anti-heroes, and these characters are darker and driven by a purpose that no matter what gets in their way, they continue to pursue their goals at any cost.